Well, they say you save the best for last, and so um, we look forward to Madame Gautier's uh, final closing words um, afterwards. Uh, in the meantime, I, um, I have the privilege of uh, presenting to you a project that uh, has been undertaken in Athens, in Greece. Um, donc, Madame Wolf, uh, Madame Lacroix, Madame Champeau, merci beaucoup pour cette invitation. Um, what happens when you bring together an innovative design team, uh, a contractor that's willing and cooperative, and a client with a fierce, fierce commitment to delivering and promoting cultural arts and education. You breathe life into a construction site. And so far too often a construction site is, it's, it's an obstacle, it's a means to an end. Uh, it's a blight on the urban horizon, something that we endure just until, um, well, in anticipation of something that will be beneficial to the society. But we challenge that, we say, well, let's celebrate the construction site itself and use it to activate the community. The Stavros Niarchos Foundation Cultural Center is a, um, it's a project being undertaken in Athens in Greece by the Stavio, Stavros Niarchos Foundation. It will host the Greek National Opera, the National Library of Greece, and a 17 hectare um, site, a uh, 17 hectare park in the middle of Athens, um, to the south of it in a coastal area. Um, Arab are providing multidisciplinary engineering services, and we're collaborating with uh, Renzo Piano Building Workshop on this, uh, on this project. Um, it will be a beacon of sustainability, a LEED Platinum certified project. You can see at the top there's a 100-meter um, uh, by 100-meter solar array. Um, I was in, involved in the water management strategy. Um, but aside from the project being a, a fantastic deliverable in the end and legacy project for uh, the Greek community and, and the world itself, um, Throughout construction, and this is what uh, Letitia and I had a, a pleasure discussing, there are a number of initiatives that the foundation has undertaken um, to ensure that the population, the public, embraces this project. Um, there's a construction site, and it will be a five-year-long construction period approximately, um, so they understood that it was important to, from day one, engage with the public and get them on board and get them used to the environment as well. So you'll see here, it's a 21-hectare 20, site a massive site in the south of Athens on the coast of the Aegean Sea, um, just beside the Olympic infrastructure, which is unfortunately disused today. Um, it's on the site of an old hippodrome. So in Montreal, we can think of the Blue Bonnets, um, old hippodrome and potential uses. But there was an old hippodrome there. It is uh, an archaic burial ground as well. Um, but it will become this hub of culture and arts. Um, it's a huge project right now. It's 1,500 employees, staffs, workers on site presently. Um, so a very active construction site to build these two massive structures and a, an artificial hill, which will be built up right behind it. So the foundation, in their desire to promote culture, uh, promote education and physical well-being, um, and to engage with the public and really get their support from day one, have, have embarked on a number of different measures to ensure that there is that integration. Um, and I'll speak to you quickly today about some of them, and uh, the reason why it'll be quickly is because I want to get to the, the dance of the cranes and show you some, some dancing cranes. But um, step one is a municipal park. So the foundation, as a first part of work, invested in a park, and it's a legacy that will be given to the, to the municipality. Uh, so from, from the, the offset, it was clear that the foundation was there to provide a cultural center which would be an amenity to the public. And with that, they provide this amenity from day one, a municipal park which is accessible to the public, not to the elite, um, but readily accessible. Aside from that, you can see from the perim perimeter fencing, uh, it's not quite the quadrilateral system, but it is a, uh, another take on the, the typical um, perimeter hoarding. And so you can see uh, just the standard before visual in intervention and, and what, what came afterwards. And now when you're working on a project with, with Renzo Piano, it, there's an attention to detail uh, for everything, for every stage of the project. And so just as much at this construction stage, he has an interest in uh, ensuring that everything is aesthetic, is, is well integrated in harmony with the surroundings. Um, and this, you can see the, the, the foundation has used their branding colors as a repeated theme across these, uh, these fences. And if you go there to site now, you'll see that they are almost as pristine as that. 
Um, previously, I had been to site a number of times, and it was, it was just riddled with vandalism, with graffiti, uh, litter, and these have a positive impact on the urban environment and a sense of ownership with the public. Uh, aside from that, 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 uh, that hoarding, that perimeter fencing is made permeable. It's made porous so that people are actually invited within it so they can experience the construction, they can witness what is going on behind those normally closed doors uh, in an interactive box. So you have an interactive um, system that is there where you can learn about the project, learn about the future uses, learn about the construction activities, and also the cultural programming, which has actually begun right now during the construction phase and not necessarily to come at ribbon opening. All of this is also centered around one visitor center, um, an initiative that was an afterthought by the foundation. It wasn't planned right off. I spoke to them the other day, and, and they were saying, well, you know what, if we were to do this again, maybe we would have planned this from day one. Um, inclusions in, in RFP specifications, for example. Um, but this was an afterthought, and quite a successful one. Um, they used it again to, to, to engage with the public, with the Greek community. In this case, it was a national student, uh, architectural student competition. And the winning, winning design was actually selected by Renzo Piano. So you can see the two, two um, Greek students, the architectural students, who won the design. And the, uh, the product was actually delivered, uh, designed, and constructed. And um, it offers a snapshot of all the cultural programming which will happen in the, the cultural center once it's, once it's open. But they're doing that now. It's drawing 25,000. Their first year, they drew 25,000 people to the construction site, to this visitor center alone. Uh, they have two visits per day of school children who attend this, who laugh, who dance, um, who, who sing. Um, and it's for all, I mean, the, the entire range of public. It's not just for children, it's for, um, for the elderly as well, just highly accessible. And they use this to, um, to not only provide information on projects uh, and the construction activities, which is usually the, the main driver and the main function of a, uh, a visitor center, but also to... Um, to, to serve as a gathering point, another t traditional use, but now they're also using it to, to build the public and future um, users of the cultural center. So this youth who will be the ones who will inherit, the, inherit this cultural center are now starting to get used to the location, get used to the site, understand what opera is all about, what the library will be all about, and they will adopt this and they will, uh, they will really take on the, the cultural center and everything it has to use. Um, they also engage with NGOs and local parties, we, a number of people have mentioned how it's important to get those, those local community bodies involved, and so they've, they've brought them in to discuss the potential use of the foundation in the future, and also put together, uh, whether it be yoga classes or dance classes or anything that is uh, right there, directly adjacent to the site. And what's key with this also is accessibility. Um, they want to turn a construction site from being an obstacle to an attraction, and to do that you have to make sure it's accessible and it's amenable. Um, so they've linked it with public transportation up here. Um, some of the infrastructure, the public transportation infrastructure from the Olympics also is now connected in so that everyone can make their way to this visitor center. They've even invested in a pedestrian bridge, a temporary pedestrian bridge, which goes over the construction site, provides a safe and inviting uh, walkway and passage to access into the construction site and the visitor center. Um, they're doing this on two levels. They're doing this physically, so they're engaging with the public, bringing them into the site, physically into the site, um, but also virtually. So there's a live webcam, for example. This is just a, a shot from my computer, and it's in black and white now because it's, it's, it's nighttime in Greece, but uh, it's, it's in full color uh, normally. And uh, they're also offering guided tours. So once a week on Sundays, uh, a bus takes 50 people uh, throughout the site. And just about every week, there are three bus loads that, that go throughout. Professionals, just general members of the public who are interested, um, the youth. So it's really it's a great way for, uh, for the project to, 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 to expand its horizons and, and its reach um, to the public. Um, this is just an example of how they open up the construction site. So 1,000 cyclists descended upon the construction site and were actually invited to the construction site one night. And it's this sort of social media group that, uh, that, that group up in, in Athens every Friday throughout the summer. And uh, one day they, they were given a, an invitation by Facebook just to say, you know what, you're welcome to come by the Savros Niarchos Foundation Cultural Center and be some of the first to experience the future cycle path going through the park. So a thousand cyclists come to a construction site, um, really appropriate the visitor center, appropriate the site, they become one with it, and, and, and 
develop a sense of ownership, which is something quite unique and quite rare, and it's a wonderful opportunity that they seized. Um, and they got to witness the, um, the construction site. With that, health and safety concerns, of course, um, but all of that is, is managed with a close collaboration with the, uh, with the contractor and the health and safety commissioners. So I won't read this to you. I'll give you a moment to read it uh, yourself. That's, that, that, why not? Why not? <laughs> so what, what's interesting here is that this is an excerpt from the mission statement um, of the cultural center, the Stavros Nyarkos uh, Foundation Cultural Center upon opening and throughout operation. But what's fantastic is that the foundation is achieving the objectives therein today throughout construction. And there's still another year or two of construction to go. And so to be able to achieve these and to connect with the local community, add value to the community, and not necessarily just be a blight on the urban horizon and a bad neighbor for several years, um, this is, a, I find, a fantastic, fantastic example. Uh, and I commend the, the, the client, in this case, for their, their strong initiative. So these are some of these, just to summaries, summarize, these are some of the initiatives that were taken on at the, uh, at the cultural center. Um, there's no reason that those can't be taken and adopted and implemented on projects around the world. Um, in Montreal, we think of a number of major construction sites that are upon us right now or in the near future um, in the heart of the, the community. I mean, le, le recouvrement de la ville Marie, l'agrandissement de Pointe à Calière, le re redéveloppement éventuel de, de Blue Bonnets. There are just a number of projects that, that we will be forced to cohabit with. and. Um, and why not take some of these, these lessons, some of the lessons that we've learned today uh, from all across the world, and implement them here? Um, I think that there are three key elements that are required to make that happen. And it is an innovative and visionary design team, a contractor who is willing to cooperate, because it's essential that the, the, the project must go on, construction must go on, and can't be hindered by this, and a client that's highly ambitious. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's their initiative that really permits this. Um, and to close off, um, I'll leave you with some dancing cranes. Um, it's uh, quite a fantastic spectacle that they put on a performance. It was a vision of Ren Renzo Piano uh, himself, and the foundation then made this happen with close collaboration from the contractor and uh, nearly a dozen crane operators. Um, so it is a uh, it's the Greek national well the orchestra of the Greek national opera, who are performing um, Gustav Holst's The Planets, and showcasing nearly a dozen special artists, special dancers, um, the tower cranes themselves. I'm not sure, unless they have it. Unless they, do they have it? Can't get away from technical glitches. After all that build up. <laughs> can we have it? Wait, can we have internet connection? <laughs> ah, voilà le password que j'ai oublié ce matin. Mais comment on fait? And I guess just a note while. Uh, well, um, we're trying to figure this out. Uh, it, it, the performance itself and the thousand cyclists descending upon the construction site, they're, they're really one-off events. Um, and they, they wouldn't necessarily add as much value um, by themselves if they weren't coupled with this, um, this ubiquitous visitor center, which is there, which is drawing a crowd, which is a point of assembly, which, uh, which serves to invite delegates um, and dignitaries, but equally to bring in the, um, the public so it's a, um, it's, a mix, it's a combination of those two, these, these spectacular events um, and the ongoing programming, which really makes this site something that is, is really turned from being an obstacle to an attraction and is drawing 25,000 people a year before opening of the actual cultural center.
Ouais, on va on va commencer les questions. Uh, donc j'invite les I invite the speakers of the last session to come on stage and then we'll start with questions. So thank you.